Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and hopefully recruit some of you more experienced painters to paint along with us. And today we're going to be doing the final coat on our hummingbird. Now I've already done the final coat on the full palette, the one for people who have all the colors in the world on their palette. And I think the outcome is absolutely gorgeous. I'm real pleased with this. So um, this is what the full palette, if you have all these millions of colors, will look like. Um, I also, but today we're going to be working on the beginner pal uh, palette. And this is my first coat on the beginner palette. And this is the one we're going to be working on. So just to give you an idea of how it turned out. Uh, for those of you um, that want to try this and haven't yet, there is a study out there that you can get. And uh, it'll give you the basics that you need in order to get started and remind you to take your labels and things off. It will have your line drawing. So you can just uh, trace this on your piece and uh, pen it in. That's actually the first fire. And then it will have um, a, co a coated section here that will tell you for beginner and full palette There'll be little um, letters like A is for Auburn and BG is for black green and blood is for blood, <laughs> blood red and SP is for soft pink. And that's the code that you can use um, uh, to help you get started on knowing where to put the colors. And then you have to watch the video and you'll have a link to my video so you can go back into Facebook and watch to see where we put in like the texture and things like that. Um, the next page will have the codes and almost looks like a paint by number. So you'll, you'll basically use these codes to help you figure out what color to put where. And you can, and then the page after this will be the first fire, for example, because that was the first fire, the first fire without the codes on it. So you can actually see what I did because it's kind of difficult if you can't. It all comes in the email as an attachment, and then you open the attachment and print it out, download it and print it out. What I'm gonna do first, this is the, um, the hummingbird, is I'm going to put yellow um, pretty much anywhere that there's this texture. So you see there's a texture down there. There's a lot of texture up in here with the green. So wherever there's green texture, those will be yellow. And then wherever I put, um, chartreuse, like these leaves, that leaf, that and this leaf, that will have yellow. The other thing that will have yellow is this branch, anywhere that there's brown on here, that's going to have yellow. So that's, that's the first thing we're gonna do. Then we're gonna go back, and the next thing we're gonna do is here, we have a little um, moss green, like up here, and we're gonna put chartreuse over it. Now, if you're a beginner and you don't have chartreuse yet, then what I would recommend is that you mix your paint and you can mix your yellow with your moss green and you can get chartreuse. Colors we will be using, the only thing I've added, I added a, um, a cobalt or a banding blue. I think if you have to go out and buy one color this month, that's probably a good one to, um, to add. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, the other thing would be, you may want to add a pink at this point because I really think that um, on this particular piece, you kind of need a pink to soften it. So um, that'll give you an idea of what we're, what we're doing here. Okay, I'm gonna start on this fire with uh, probably my number four. This is a square shader, number four. And it's a, a real nice one to use. We're gonna start, um, first of all, though, with the bird in the middle, because if I, um, start painting out here, and then I go into the middle, I'm going to get my hand in it. So I'm going to try to avoid that by um, starting with the bird in the middle. And so on him, um, I'm going to use a blue, baby blue, to um, put it on his head a little bit here. Got it there. And I'm also going to use a baby blue. Let me just get a little more oil on there. I couldn't remember if I put oil on or not. To do his, um, this part here. And you notice how the, the change in color, the adding the new color, really seems to brighten things up. 
Now I have to, I'm going to go upside down so that I can smooth this back because I want to keep the green there, but I want to make sure I smooth the color in. Okay. All right. I did that there for him. And then I'm going to put a little bit of um, chartreuse out here on the wings. Just a little bit. You may not even be able to tell it's there because it's not real, real noticeable, but I just want to finish out the wings. Okay. And then on the breast of him, I'm going to do the blue again, baby blue. Now, one thing I need to say to people is, you can make this hummingbird any color you want. The nice thing about hummingbirds is they're so colorful that they're, it doesn't matter what colors you make them. Now that we're in the blue, I'm going to also put a little blue on the wings. So I'm gonna put a little blue here. Oops, let's get it, baby blue. I'm gonna put a little blue here, here, just at the tips of the wings. Here, and then the other place um, that we're going to add some color, I'm going to take my blood red, and I'm going to add it down here around the base of the bird, right here around the base, just at the top, not the whole thing, because I want it to look like it's graduated. And then I'm also going to take, I've got, uh, this is royal violet, and I'm putting it up at the top here because you do want this tail to be pretty, pretty fancy. And the other reason that I only did the upper part of this, the red above this is because it, um, if this purple gets up in there, I can wipe it off and I won't ruin my red. So let me get a little more purple on there. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull my purple down so see what I've done so far. I'm going to pull the purple down. I don't know if you can see that purple. It's kind of light, but and pull it down because you want it smooth. Oops, I have to pull it back too. I guess I just have to play with it. Pull down, pull back. Okay, and then I'll pull back up like this. Okay, and pull back up like this. All right, cleaning my brush. And I'm going to go in here and take off a little of the color I got there and a little of the color I got up there. Because you need this to be clean. Because this is going to be the final fire. Um, now I'm going to use a slightly larger brush. I think I'm going to grab my 10 here. This is my 10. And it's a um, square shader, but it's also the, the um, quill type. Because it has the plastic on the the bottom here, that's how you know the quill type. And I'm going into my yellow. And I'm going to take him where, like I said before, now I'm out in this area because I finished my bird. So I'm going to start putting the yellow all the places I told you I'm going to put the yellow. I'm going to put here because that's got a, this is what I call a texture where it has that squiggle on it. I'm going to put it up here because there's a squiggle up there. You want to put this on fairly dark, not, not heavy, because you don't want it thick, you want it dark. And I'm gonna keep a, um, my number four handy because I would need to wipe off those lines. You want the lines to stay black. So keep something handy so that you can wipe back if you get the yellow on the line, because the yellow will make it look weird. <laughs> um, it'll kind of block it out, okay. I'm going to put yellow up in here. There we go. This is, think of this as the light coming through from behind. And you'll see in a minute, it, it really does kind of give you that, that feel. Okay, I'm going to put some yellow here. And like I said, block it in and then go back. And if you need to see here, I don't know if you can see, but right there, I got it over the black. So I'm taking my brush and just wiping it off the black. Because you want the black to be stained glass, so you want it to be like that lead. Okay. Now I'm going back into my yellow, and I'm also going to go over the brown up in this area. So up in here, I'm going to do the brown. 
turn your your piece as you go. You may have to um, turn it just so that you can get into those areas without affecting other areas. Down here, there's a little bit of brown. I'm going to put a little brown yellow in there. Okay, so that's what I've done. I put yellow anywhere that I had a texture up there. This one could probably use a little more yellow. You can go back and play with them later. After you get all done, you can look at the depth of them. Okay, and then I put yellow on the brown. Now I'm going to come down here, put yellow. Here's a, a textured one. I'm going to fill that in with yellow. This is fun. It's paint by number, basically. It's a full load on your brush. You don't do anything fancy with this when you're putting this color on. You just, okay, there I did the texture. Down here I have two more that need texture. So I'm just going to put the yellow. I, they have texture, rather. See, they have the, the squiggly lines. And so I'm putting the yellow over them. Now, if you pull out into the background here, you can always wipe it off. That's probably the safest place to pull out, is into the, the rim there. And then clean your brush very thoroughly and go through and really clean it up. Get that yellow off of there. And I have to do it up in here, because it's on the black. Okay. Now, doesn't that make it look like there's a little bit of light coming through the back? I think it's so cool. So cool. All righty. We're going to go back down here now in the brown. Add a yellow here. Add a yellow here. Add yellow back in here. Pulling it across. And on this little bar down here. And you just want to get the yellow in. It's not a big deal. Just get the yellow in and clean your brush. Okay, and if you need to, go back and, and clear it off. So I'll pull it back so you can see. That's where I have all the yellow. Next color I'm going to do is the moss green. So wherever there's moss green, I'm going to put chartreuse over it. So this is moss green. I'm going to start at the base and I'm going to put chartreuse. You can mix your chartreuse by taking moss green and yellow, whatever yellow you have. Now you should have put a little bit of texture on this guy last time. So when you're painting this time, you don't, you just put a flat coat on it. That's what makes this so easy is you can always put a flat coat on him. Oh, almost lost that brush. Okay. And um, I have chartreuse down here to put on, and here, and here. And this one, I'm going to put chartreuse on. And it's going to be cool because you've got the dark at the top, the dark at the bottom, and I'm going to pull the chartreuse across like this. Okay, and then down here I have a problem with the yellow or the chartreuse getting on the dark. So I'm just going to go through. You may want to do that even at the end. Go through and make sure that you have your color off your black lines as much as possible. There's a little here. Okay. Oh, this is chartreuse over here too, this guy. It just brightens it up. It, it does. It just brightens it up. Okay, right now we're going to do the dark greens. So whatever you used, if you used black green, if you used warm brown green, you're using um, your darkest green. So for the advanced palette, it would be the black green if you're using that. Otherwise, a warm brown green is, you know, those of you that started when I started probably, we had moss and warm brown green and those were the only colors we had. Okay, so that's the dark places up there. Then there's a couple down here. There's one there. There's one there. There's one here. You have to keep going back into your paint because you want it dark. There, 
but you don't want it thick. You want it dark and there. Oh, and there's a couple over here, there and there. Now I'm out in the edge on a lot of these and I'm just gonna go back and clean it up later because you don't need to watch me cleaning it up, but you did see what I do to clean it up. So that's 90% of it. You're gonna go back in and reinforce some of the colors you already have in here. For instance, the violet. I'll show you where they are. The violet is right here. I'm just gonna reinforce it because it's, it's a light pale color. And if you want to shade it, you can shade it. This was a solid piece, but you could shade it. Um, I'm also going to go anywhere else I had a violet. There's one here. There's one here. Um, there's one up here. So I'm just filling them in. Make them a little darker. Oh, there's one up here. Let me turn it around. Up here, there's a, a violet. Um, oh, this is a violet here. Now, another thought is, this is a violet right here. See what I did? You could take another color. Let's say I have my cobalt, and you could just put the cobalt on one side and get a little bit of, of color that way. So it's, it's really up to you what you want to do. Um, I have added cobalt this time, um, or you can use baby blue, but I find that this, um, um, what is that that I used there, uh, Copenhagen, is a little bit kind of mm, not so bright, and I, I, it's a little grayer than I wanted, so like here I might add the cobalt down there. You can change your colors to whatever you think works for you. I prefer this very bright and happy. So now I'm just gonna go up here and start um, reinforcing some of the colors I already have. So this was a light pomp. Um, I'm, the other thing I, I'm thinking, and I'm just gonna show you this is, I think pink might be something you'd have to add. Cause look, if you put pink, this is, um, New soft pink from Ryan, uh, Rins or Ryan's, whatever you want to call them here. I think that makes it really pretty. And I think up in here, you can add a new soft pink and you can get a graduated. See how the color is graduated from the dark to the light. This was pomp, a light pomp, and this is now pink. Um, if you use pomp, you have to start with Let's do this one up here. You have to start with the pomp up here and then just pull it down. And you can get a graduated color. But I some of these I'm going to leave without any color, you know, with the color with the white at the bottom. And if you look at the, um, the study that I have, you will be able to see where to do that and, and where not to. So um, I would go back and I would reinforce some of these pinks, make them a little pinkier at the bottom, either using pomp or use a real pink over it. And then um, a couple of places, um, you just want to brush it. Oops, that's too heavy. You just want to brush it over. Oh, that's way too heavy. Let me get that off of there. You can also mix colors. So let me get a, here's a baby blue. I'm gonna go on some of these that are Copenhagen and I'm just going to take and put, too dark. I'm gonna take and just put a light wash of baby blue in there. And um, up here, I'm gonna put a light wash of baby blue up there. And some of these purples up in here. You can put a light wash of baby blue or a light wash of pink over them. And then you, then it's sort of up to you, kind of go through, try to follow the colors you, you did last time, reinforce the ones that you need to reinforce. Like this is extremely light, so I would probably want to add a darker color there. 
And so I would take a little bit of pomp on the side and just go back over it. So it's a little, a little darker. I think you have to stick with the pinks and purples and blues on the wisteria, but the bird you can make any color. The leaves, obviously, you're going to stick with the green on that. Um, the only other color that I would introduce, like I said, is um, the cobalt or the banding blue. And I would use it like, see down here, could use it. And I would just go right over that banding blue, I mean that Copenhagen blue that I had there. And then I would pull the color out a little, little bit. Oops. Use your towel to wipe off. And that kind of helps graduate the color. I worked right here. And uh, let's see, where else do I? Here I have cope. Here I have cope. And to me, they're just, they. I need a little perk up in that area. So those are good places where I might go back and just add a little bit of um, the cobalt or the um, banding blue. And see the difference it makes? It just gives you a little spark. So maybe that's a color that you experiment with and buy this time um, if you're looking for new colors. Um, up in here, I have a lot of the same color. And I would like to get another color up in there. Now, some of these had a blue on them, and I only put the pink on. One of them was this guy right here. He had a blue on the bottom half of him. So I'm just adding the blue in. And maybe down here I'll add a little blue. And then maybe I'll go into my purple, and I'll add a little purple right here. Oops, it's not quite that dark and maybe a little purple up in here. So you can add other colors. Try to make them complementary colors. I wouldn't put yellow in with the red. It, I tried it. I can show you what it looked like. Um, oh, there's a lot of oil on here. I gotta get rid of that oil. Um, and it just didn't. Um, so here's the yellow. And I put tried putting yellow on that. I don't care for that, but that's me. If you like that, you can do that. If you think adding a little yellow maybe to the blue or something would be good, you can certainly do that. This is your piece. You can do whatever colors you want. But um, I'm just giving you some suggestions. So I'm pretty happy with most of this. I think I'd go in and darken a couple more of these. Um, I'm going to use pink because I have it and because I think some of these could use a little pink. So up in here, I'm just gonna make that a solid pink because I really don't have any solid pinks up here. Oh, gotta get the color darker. You remember how you get the color dark? You squish it around. So there, and I think I'll make this a solid pink. So you don't have to go by my study. If my study says use pink and you don't have it, use another color. And uh, pop is a good choice for that. Okay, now clean my brush really well, and I'm going to go back around and just make sure, see right here, I have a lot of color outside the lines. I'm going to wipe that up, and then I'm going to go all the way around and make sure that I've wiped up all the color that's outside the lines. And I'm really going to look at it because I don't want to have it look terrible. And then you go around the outside here and try to wipe up the color. If it runs, if you miss a place and it, it's like you really have a lot of color and you need to get rid of it, um, there is that wink that uh, I talked about a while ago that everybody had a conniption about, but it does work to remove the color. I think I'm pretty happy with this. It will fire like it looks. Oh, you know what else I would do yet? I'm not completely happy. Hang on. I would take my dark purple, and I think I would... Not that much. I would just lightly shade a few of these. Like that. Because I kind of want them all the same 
um, value or you know shades of this is this one that we just did and I will have to go back and figure out what colors I used where because I kind of strayed um, uh, to finish off the final um, the, the final um, part of the study for you. That's the beginner and then again this was the this was the full palette. This has rubies, rose pompadours, um, the dark the darks that you see up here. These are rubies and rose pompadours and things. This, see by comparison, oops, can you see? This by comparison has, okay, let me come up closer, more of the reds than the rubies. I really like the rubies, I think. And I didn't know that they would turn out this well, so I was pretty pleased. So if you have those those rubies and purples and things that you've tried in the past and they haven't worked for you, this is a good study to do it on um, because the berries and the rubies and the rose pompadours and some of the purples that sometimes can be grainy and not come out the way you want them to really turned out nicely on this because you're only painting a small portion and you can control it a little better. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted China. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.